Hey guys, welcome back. Before we get started with Off Track Part 2, um, I'd like to show you a couple packages I received early last week. Um, I'd also like to talk about a tool failure I had and uh, a couple other interesting things I might throw in there. Anyway, uh, thanks again for all your subscriptions and comments and likes. Really appreciate it. Um, I'd like to tell all the other fellow YouTube contributors, you guys are doing a fantastic job, man. I'm having a hard time keeping up with them. Good stuff out there. Anyway, thanks for sharing, man. Anyway, let's take a walk over to the workbench here, and uh, I'll show you what I got. Okay, the first package I got uh, came from uh, Mr. Tom Lipton of Oxtool. Um, before I get into what Tom sent me, um, I'm going to explain what transpired uh, beforehand. Uh, my daughter's boyfriend, Philip, uh, was at work and they were cleaning up the shop and somebody was throwing this in the dumpster. It's a 500, uh, 500, yeah, five inch mill cutter, um, pretty heavy duty, an arbor. He told me the name of the arbor. I don't know what it is, but uh, I thought it was kind of cool. So I thought I'd maybe um, modify it to fit an R8 spindle. So I'm um, watching um, one of Tom's videos. It was uh, Money Night Meatloaf for, number 41. And Mr. James Green sent him uh, some inserts, a whole care package of all kinds of different inserts. And in that were inserts that look very familiar to these. So then in uh, Money Night Meatloaf number 44, um, Mr. Mark Schuster sent Tom what he thought would fit those inserts, um, a seven inch or eight inch uh, mill cutter. Um, and Tom found out they didn't fit. So uh, I, I messaged Tom and I said, hey, I may have a cutter that those inserts fit. So I sent him some measurements and uh, we both decided that they looked pretty darn close. So uh, sure enough, um, it looks like they um, fit. Uh, so Tom sent me McMaster car bag, I like those. He sent me these cutters. And sure enough, they're not exactly like this cutter, but I could take these cutters out and insert these in this mill cutter and it will be, you know, good as new. These are all brand new. They still have the rubber on them, uh, the rubber protection on the uh, carbide cutter. So these things are nice, man. I, I never thought I would actually find a replacement. Uh, the one I have here, um, it looks like it was dropped and it, it broke the tooth off right here. I don't know if you could see it, but um, Philip and I already removed it. They come right out. Um, they are a little tight in there. They're, they're installed with a set screw. Just like Tom's mill cutter, um, these come out the same exact way. So anyway, my plan is, is to get this thing back in use, um, whack this off maybe and put an R8, um, arbor in here and and go to town so anyway uh, maybe that'll be a future video sometime anyway um, so Tom just couldn't send me just these inserts he had to go ahead and include a pair of his maxi flex gloves which I'm going to give a try here in a minute hopefully today I'll use them it's been pretty hot here so I don't know if I could bear the heat um, Tom did say they breathe but these things are pretty nice um, he sent me a size large. Um, I do take extra large, but believe it or not, I can pull these things over these big bear paws I got, and uh, they're nice and tight. So um, thank you, Tom. I think uh, these are going to really come in handy. Maybe they'll keep me from getting cut up as much. Anyway, uh, he also sent me one of his pendants. Uh, these things are really cool. Um, I think I might put it on... Um, my keychain or my um, my machining apron. Anyway, it's neat. Anyway, Tom, thank you very much. I'd also like to thank James Green for sending the inserts to Tom, and also uh, Mark Schuster for the uh, mill head that he sent Tom. Um, so that's how it transpired. Um, thank you, Tom. I really appreciate the the thought and the gifts. Everything's going to come in use. Um, 
and I appreciate it. Uh, the next package I received comes from Mr. Herb Blair, Carlton, Texas. Um, Herb's got a YouTube channel also. He does some neat stuff in his shop. Check it out. And he's also got a web mill like mine, except I believe it's a J head uh, or a step pulley head, not a, um, a variable speed. But um, Herb sent me one of his Texas famous uh, Osage orange wood uh, tapping hammers. Herb, you did a good job here, buddy. I really appreciate it. Um, it's really going to come in handy. I don't have a little hammer like this, and I'll be happy to add it to my small hammer collection. Anyway, um, he's got an earled handle in here. He's got some accents cut in here. So I know there's uh, I know there's some time and machining in here. So this isn't something that you just throw away and throw together in a few minutes. Um, anyway, Herb, good job, man. Thanks, I appreciate it. And you let me know if you need anything as well. Next on the list, um, I want to mention um, off track the tractor wheel project I'm doing for a friend. I know there's many ways to do this machining operation. Um, I think optimally it would be better to have drilled the hole closer to the size than maybe bore it two or three times to an exact size. I don't have drill bits over one inch, um, so I had to use what I had. And I only have a, a two inch um, boring head. So that leads me to my next little issue. Um, I had a Criterion DBL202 boring head that I scored on eBay last year. Well, every time I used it, um, it seemed like it was um, real rough to use. So I took it all apart, cleaned it, put it all back together, and me and Phil used it a couple times. Well, sure enough, the reason it didn't feel right is because the micro threads on the inside for moving the head out um, were all stripped out. There was only two or three good heads in there, and that's why it was able to work. Well, during this last operation, um, it finally took a crap. Um, so I called Criterion. I found out they are no longer in business. They were bought out by a company called Allied Machine, and they're in Dover, Ohio. So I, I sent the boring head in, and they're going to check it out and see if it can be repaired. Thank God Philip had. Let me grab it real quick. Philip had an import, um, just like the Criterion, except that it is an import and the uh, graduations aren't as fine. But you know what, it saved our butt. So you notice in the video, Off Track 2, um, there's the criterion in the beginning and then this import um, about midway. So Philip, thank you for letting me use this boring head. It saved my butt and thanks for your help on this project, I really appreciate it. Um, there is gonna be a part three. Um, I didn't have time to finish it last night. Um, it got hot and I got tired. So um, sit back and the video clip should be coming up here shortly. Thanks. We are back. Okay, I'm using my uh, Blake coax indicator and I got it within five thou um, all the way around. So I think we're good to go. Oh, and um, up and down. So um, Everything's locked down. I'm going to switch out to the boring head and we'll be back. Just taking a light skim cut right now just to see how it's going to act, how it cuts. I just took a light skim cut. Um, our final dimension is one inch 750 thousandths and we're about 1.250 here so we got to take roughly a uh, half inch out of this thing 250 per side. So um, this is going to take a while so uh, let's get going man.
I'm a little over an inch and a half right now and I'm getting into a little bit of an interrupted cut. As you can see, I'm getting into um, those threaded holes right there. I'm not even sure what they were for. And then over here, where I um, welded the slug in, where the pinch point is, it's starting to break through there too. So I'm gonna have to start making smaller cuts and just kind of take it easy. Um, the surface actually looks pretty rough, but it's not. It's um, it's actually pretty smooth. I don't know why it's maybe because it's cast steel. It's it looks rough, but anyway, um, let's forge ahead. to 2.200 inches. There we go. One more cut and we are two size. Almost there. We want to go to what? Forty-eight? No, it's seven forty-nine. I mean, that's kind of. Yeah, let's go to let's go to uh, seven forty-nine. There's a good drag on it right there. Yeah. So let's say one inch seven forty-six. Yeah. Good enough for government work, Phil. <laughs> Per rev down feed, did you want to go one and a half on the finish? No. No, it's 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 really smooth and it's cutting perfect, so I, I don't want to mess with something that's working right. It, it needs some juice though. Well we go. <laughs> oh, rely on. <laughs> You ever try that Tatmatic stuff? No, I can't afford that. <laughs> Killing the brush. That's all right, they're cheap. I know a guy. It's cutting good, though. Well, there's our final cut. Looks like a good one. Even for... Uh, Several interruptions, it's a pretty damn good cut. And for a ghetto ground carbide insert, it's working really well. And it's, it's on. So during the boring, boring operation, uh, I started paging through this magazine Philip brought me. And sure enough, I get to this one section here. And who do we have? Oh, Mr. Wizard. I guess uh, Tom writes a column for this. Very interesting stuff. 
Um, if you want to read Tom's magazine, or actually his column, it's in this uh, monthly uh, edition of uh, Cutting Tool Engineering. So um, I wanted to throw that in there. Tom, awesome shit, man. All right, Phil, explain what we're doing next. After the bore, uh, we have to uh, weld prep the end, basically kind of make a little chamfer 45 or some random angle so that we can get a nice, uh, good, you know, weld nugget kind of, if you will, inside the tube. Because the, uh, I don't know where we went, the other side of the sleeve has a nice chamfer on it, and we're going to add a chamfer on this as well so that the weld can get deep down into the root and uh, good penetration, and it's not going to come out. Right. But Show us the tool you made, Phil. Well, I got bored at work, and uh, this is a piece of uh, 4140 HT. I turned an uh, inch and a half uh, on the main body, three quarter inch collet, so that you could easily use it in R8. You know, I've got a bridge port, you just got a web, so it's easier. You know, we could swap it out and this and that. It's got a 3 8 uh, slot for a 3 8 high speed steel, whatever you want to use. It also has a 3 8 um, bored hole through at a 45 degree angle that was supposed to be square broached but I need to design a work holding fixture that will allow me to broach it without this kind of one spitting out of the you know it's at an angle but I had it come out through the same slot so it's not you don't have all this weird stuff you get two set screws for the angled and then your three set screws and these are 1024 uh, set screws we have a high speed steel um, 3 8 bit in there Cut almost at a 45 degree angle. It's a little shallow. Close enough. Yeah, and gonna we're gonna get, we're we're basically gonna spin it in reverse. It's gonna get well. Yeah, the tool is a lathe tool, and it should be sticking out the other way. But because of the geometry of the tool, it has to be spun uh, in reverse. But it doesn't matter. Same thing. Okay, let's get set up, and then we'll make the cut. Go. So we're all set up for our chamfer cut. What are we gonna do? You're gonna turn the machine on. Well, yeah, but I'm. And then you're gonna the feed machine. the knee up into it. Well, yeah, we set our zero. Yeah, we got our zero set. We got the quill locked, and we're going to come up into it. And we're going to have to interrupt the cut, so let's see what happens. We've got to re well, I've got to come up a few thousand. Real good so far. It's cutting a nice chamfer. It's shallow, but it'll. That's all right. It's, it's going to make a nice weld bed. Perfect weld bed. I'd say that's deep enough, though. I don't know. You, you want it to match this one. Oh, See, that's right. We're trying to duplicate the uh, chamfer on the sleeve. Rigid tool, man. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, this is the first time that it's been used ever. So I'm happy with it. Yeah. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out so that I'm half the distance between the bore. I think we're there. Okay, I'm going to let it dwell for a minute. Taking our spring cut right now. As you can hear, a little bit of chatter. We're backing out. And I'll get your close-up shot here in a second. All right, man, another step closer. It's got some chatter, but... Here's a shot of our D-Bird board hole. Uh, it's one thou under our sleeve size. Um, Basically hit those edges with a file and a little uh, emery cloth. We have our uh, chamfer there for our weld bed. So our next step is uh, press the sleeve in.
Sleeve is now pressed in. I left a little long on both ends on purpose so I could weld it and then um, basically face it or surface it, whatever you want to call it. Oh, that baby's in there. All right, guys, I had enough of this heat for the day. Um, I don't think I ever told you, but the front of my shop faces west. And we all know the sun sets in the west here in California. And uh, it gets freaking hot. So I just wanted to show you guys something. This is my garage right now. And I've been out here all freaking day. So I've had it. Time for a beer, brothers. See you soon.